Hey, I'm Ryan Harris with Snowbike World. I'm here with Randy Gentry, the uh, owner and creator of Moto Tracks. Uh, he has brought down the 2018 Mountain 129 Moto Tracks kit. Oh, there's some cool new stuff on here that uh, we're really excited about. So we're going to have Randy walk us through this thing. We got a lot of hours on the snow, a lot of miles on the snow. A lot of our issues from last year basically came from deep snow performance and high speed trail and racing. And that was to do with the suspension, so we've addressed all those things this year. Some major changes you'll notice. The shock valving is completely different. We're 70% stiffer on the rebound dampening. And if you rode a last year model, what you would notice is in high speed whoops, there was a lot of kicking on the rear end that's completely solved with the new valving. There was just too much rebound. And uh, Fox actually helped us tune that to get the to get it working right. And we did also increase the compression dampening a little bit internally, but mostly focused on the rebound. So the geometry on the arms is identical, but one thing you will notice in the front is this right here. That's the Evo part of the Moto Link. It's our next evolution of it. And what it does is that stiffens the front end of the rails. Something that faster riders last year noticed was when you were coming out of a corner and getting back on a straightaway, getting on the gas or getting off the gas, sometimes the rear end felt a little loose, almost like something wasn't attached. And what it was was the rail tips walking back and forth. That actually stabilizes the rail tips. Another added feature is if you're out in the back country and you hit a log or a stump or something off camber, it'll actually stabilize the rail tips, makes it a lot stronger. Not only is that rear slider about 30% larger in diameter just for uh, durability, mm -hmm. but that spring actually helps deep snow performance drastically. So what was happening last year is when you get on the gas from going real slow in deep snow, the rear end would want to pull up. And that spring keeps the rear end stabilized so that you don't trench. And testing side by side with one with and one without, the trenching was reduced by almost 50% in deep powder. Okay. We found on the kit we were riding right. is on, on bumps and on hardback and on high speed stuff, this kit was awesome. You get into the deep snow, and yeah, it's just doing exactly what you're saying. It's just right. trenching through the snow rather than walking up on top. Yeah, exactly, and so that's a, a big reason as to why. This year we're actually running a two and a half inch paddle track. And what this is, is this is actually a hybrid of our last year track. And so what you're getting is you're getting a two and a half inch center paddle but the outside lugs are two inches and they have this serrated edge on them. And the reason we did that is the serrated edge works really great in spring snow um, on trails, which is obviously something that's important to us. But that there's no doubt about it that a two and a half inch center paddle in deep snow, yeah. that's how you get up to the top of the mountain quick. Yeah, that'll make a difference. It does give it a little more of a rocker, but you'll also notice that our track is unique in that there's no taper. Right. It actually goes from two and a half inch flat to two inch. And the reason we did that is it adds more of a clawing edge, which for side hilling, this wants to bite into the corner of the hill. And if you have a rounded edge, it kind of wants to slide down the hill. It's like a rounded tire on a hillside. And so this bites just a little bit better on the hillside. The track's still 12 and a half inches wide. Okay. So the, the main frame is the same, but on the front bulkhead, we actually made these, these main panels here uh, about 20% thicker. We're trying to reduce flex out of the system because like I said earlier, a lot of things in the kit made it feel loose when you're on hard packed. Another thing we added this year is we're calling it the IDT and it's a strut that's dampened. So our entire kit actuates with the bike now at this mounting point. What's unique about it is that there's no actual spring effect and there's no oil, there's no maintenance. So inside of this strut right here is actually uh, polypropylene bushings and all they provide is dampening effect. So what this means is when you're going down a trail really fast or you hit a jump and you jump back in the trail or you know a, a submarine log that you didn't see, that sharp uh, sudden hit will be absorbed but nothing else. So if you're climbing a hill, you won't actually notice that that exists. You'll only notice it when, it, when a large impact hits it. We did make an improvement on the chain tensioner. So last year we actually had these stays on both sides right. that you had to adjust 
and it was pretty time consuming and a little difficult to do. So this year there's actually uh, three bolts that you loosen. You'll see the, the two bolts right here and there's also another bolt right here on the, the other side. So there's three total. And when you loosen these bolts, you just loosen them out about a, a single turn. There's actually another bolt here on the back of the bulkhead. And this bolt actually slides the entire bulkhead of the unit and track kit forward and back, which adjusts this chain so it's, it's infinite. It means you could run any sprocket you want on the front, any sprocket on the back, you could get the full life out of your chain. In fact, we're the first company to use something like that. And then on the outside, to adjust this chain, there's actually a single solid bolt. And this is a hub, it's not an axle shaft. And you, you spin these clamshells and that'll actually adjust the side chain as well. This year we've moved the auto track tension. It's available as an upgrade, but it doesn't come stock on the kits. And so we've, every kit comes with these track stays and the track stays make it where it's impossible for the, the wheels to basically come out of adjustment, yeah. no matter what kind of impact you have. And if you want the automatic track adjusters, we still have the mounts for them. It's an upgrade that you can just add to the kit. The front end isn't changed as dramatically as the rear, but there's definitely some things to take note of. One thing is these braces right here. Last year, there were no braces in between. And with the bracing, it makes the ski frame a lot more rigid because there are only two blades here. And it, it provides more precise steering overall. And then on the base, you'll see a huge difference. Last year, we had a stainless steel bent mount. And the, the mount was okay, but it had a lot of side-to-side -side flex in it, a lot of twisting flex. There's a lot of torsion on these two bolts. And over time, that, that mount could wear, bend. It was also susceptible to damage pretty easy if you hit a stump or anything really. Under the snow, it could bend back. It was a design fail point, but it was just definitely too loose in general. So with this new model, we actually have a billet mount. So this is solid billet 6061. And we also have a new ski rubber and a new ski uh, frame base. The so last year for the ski to move like that, it was actually quite a bit easier. And when you'd go into a corner and go to carve, initiate the carve, your front ski loop comes up. When your front ski loops come up, your carbides, your bottom keel shape isn't going through the snow properly, you wash out. So with the ski staying planted like that, no matter if you're on a side hill, if you're cutting or carving, it actually provides much more precise steering. The ski itself is actually identical to last year because as we were doing our R&D and testing throughout the season, we found that the major issues were with the, basically the stiffness of this ski frame and also the stiffness of this mountain ski rubber. Once those issues were addressed, the ski actually performs drastically better on its own. Another thing that we've addressed this year, um, some models, depending on the bike, the clamping effect here wasn't as great as we wanted. So when these clamp to your forks right here, they actually keep the ski frame from rotating forward. And on some models, just a few thousands of clearance is critical here. And so we've got all the bikes back into our shop over the summer and have actually remeasured and made these tolerances more exacting so that when you clamp this, it won't pull forward when you're stuck in the snow or something and you pull in your ski loop, it won't fold the ski frame forward, it'll stay put. There's only one reported case of forks ever being severely damaged with our mount system and the entire forks were ripped off the bike. So it would have happened to anything, even if it had a wheel on it. There's actually a billet mount on the back side of this plate where these three bolts go through. And then these uh, shoulder bolts right here, these stainless steel bolts, they go through into that. And so instead of last year where the, there's two pins threaded through this panel, which isn't very thick and allowed a lot of slop of play, sometimes those bolts could get stripped out. Now it's impossible for the bolts to get stripped out because these three bolts go into a billet plate and then these two bolts that hold your brake pads in position also go into that same plate. There's nothing to be stripped. And the factory edition is the same as a mountain model, only it's available in a 120 or a 129 um, because the racers are probably going to want a 120. And then it also comes with the fuel system and the dry bag system, but it also has a lot of other features like it has this shock available right here with the piggyback, fully adjustable, high low speed compression. Uh, you get centered brake pads, so they provide a lot more stopping power. They last a lot longer. Comes with a different chain, extreme chain setup that's about 20% more efficient. It also comes with uh, lighter drive sprockets. 
So overall, that, that kit has about a pound lighter drivetrain um, and then also has the billet out of the wheels.